And now we'll talk about the steps of the division of the nucleus. Now we'll talk about mitosis. Cell division is made of mitosis and cytokinesis. Mitosis is the division of the nucleus. And cytokinesis is the division of the cytoplasm. Mitosis and cytokinesis make up cell division. And when we talk about mitosis, it is often broken up into five phases. These five phases are prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Now it is important to understand that cytokinesis is not one of the stages of mitosis. Cytokinesis is often occurring at the same time as telophase, but it's mitosis and cytokinesis together that make up cell division. Let's look at each of these five stages in greater detail. Prophase is the beginning of mitosis. Now keep in mind the cells have already gone through interphase. They've gone through the G1 phase and the S phase where they've duplicated their chromosomes, the G2 phase where they're preparing for division, and now division is actually starting. So some of the things that happen in prophase is that the chromosomes within the nucleus of the cell begin to condense. Prior to this step, the chromosomes were in a very diffuse state known as chromatin. But as the cell is preparing to divide its nucleus, those chromosomes begin to condense. Centrosomes, which are microtubule structures that help to coordinate the microtubules in the rest of the cell, these centrosomes start moving to opposite poles of the cell. Keep in mind that when we are talking about poles of the cell, we're simply meaning two different ends of a rounded object much like the North Pole and the South Pole of the Earth are found on different ends of the globe. Another thing that begins to form during prophase is the mitotic spindle. The mitotic spindle is made up of microtubules coordinated by the centrosomes and will end up playing an important role in separating the duplicated chromosomes, as we'll see in just a moment. The next phase of mitosis is known as prometaphase. In prometaphase, the nuclear envelope breaks down. The mitotic spindle extends from the centrosomes. And attaches to the centromeres of the chromosomes. The place where these microtubules attach are specifically at the kinetochores, which are found on either side of the centromeres. By having microtubules attached to the kinetochores, the chromatids are linked to opposite poles of the cell. Each chromatid is half of a duplicated chromosome. Now that all of the duplicated chromosomes have been connected to microtubules coming from either side of the cell, a cellular tug of war begins, and each one of these duplicated chromosomes is pulled by the microtubules on both sides, and the result is that all of these chromosomes line up on a plate in the middle of the cell, known as the metaphase plate. You can think of this similar to the equator of the Earth, which is found equidistant between the North Pole and South Pole. This metaphase plate is right between the two poles of this newly forming cell.
so the chromosomes line up on the metaphase plate. During metaphase, the two halves of the duplicated chromosomes, the sister chromatids, they are equal and balanced, and they're ready for segregation. Or separation into two equal parts. That happens in the next part of mitosis, known as anaphase. During anaphase, the sister chromatids separate. They break free and are dragged to opposite sides of the cell. Now, while they're connected to each other, they are called sister chromatids. But as soon as they separate, they are now known as daughter chromosomes. Why is it that the sister chromatids separate? They split right down the middle at the centromere because the microtubules that are attached to the kinetochores begin to shorten. By shortening, these microtubules put pressure on the two halves of the duplicated chromosome, and eventually that center region, the centromere, will separate. This results in equal segregation of the chromosomes. into the two daughter cells. The final stage of mitosis is known as telophase. Telophase occurs when the chromosomes reach the opposite poles. The mitotic spindle, these clusters of microtubules, they break apart at this stage. Their job is finished. The chromosomes, which had been condensed during mitosis begin to unfold and decondense. And lastly, when that nuclear envelope had broken down initially, well now two nuclear envelopes reform around each cluster of chromosomes. This is happening around the same time as cytokinesis, the division of the cytoplasm. So once both daughter nuclei are formed and the cytoplasm is divided, we now have two daughter cells. Cell division has occurred. Now in previous semesters, I had a student come up with a way that helped remind them of the five steps of mitosis, and I would like to share that with you now. The order of the stages of mitosis and the general events of each stage can be remembered using the first letter of each stage. So we'll start with prophase. Prophase starts with the letter P, and during prophase, the cell prepares for the next steps of mitosis. The chromosomes condense, the mitotic spindle forms, the centrosomes move to opposite poles. Even though it's not on this diagram, the next is prometaphase. And PM, in this case, that stands for prepares more. The nuclear envelope breaks down. The microtubules begin attaching to the duplicated chromosomes, and the tug of war is just beginning. The next stage of mitosis is metaphase and starts with M. It is during metaphase that the duplicated chromosomes line up in the middle of the cell. The stage after that is called anaphase. Anaphase starts with A, and that A in this case stands for apart. Because it's during anaphase that the sister chromatids separate from each other. They move apart. The final stage is telophase, and in this case the T stands for ta-da! Because the process is completed, mitosis is finished, we now have two daughter cells when we had started with one. And each of these daughter cells has a full set of chromosomes. 
the number of chromosomes does not change in the daughter cells compared to the parent cells when we're dealing with mitosis. Well, hopefully this will help remind you of the five stages of mitosis and the general events that occur in each. Thank you for your attention, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.